It's rare that anyone gets to turn one of their hobbies into a career, let alone four or five. To Patrick Dempsey, however, that's just a start. Until age 12, Patrick Dempsey lived in Turner, Maine, a tiny town in the Lewiston-Auburn metro area. After that, he moved to the even smaller Buckfield, where he has said he had to ride a bicycle for miles whenever he needed to get to the nearest resources. Even the area's biggest town, Lewiston, lacks train access, so he rarely traveled far growing up. Now, but as a kid, it was like, I, you know, I want to go out, I want to see what's happening in the world, I want to travel. School was always difficult for Dempsey, who was placed in special education courses because of an undiagnosed learning disorder. The star attended Levitt Area High School, but struggled to the point where he dropped out before getting his degree. He recalled to fatherly, I was diagnosed with dyslexia much later, so anything to do with school was very painful, very hard to deal with. But you can get your identity and self-esteem through sport. And that's how I thrived. As a youngster, Dempsey spent a lot of his time either skiing or exploring the woods. And that way of life is clearly still appealing to the actor as he maintains a home very close to where he was raised. Speaking with Maine Magazine, he expressed his gratitude for being able to remain so connected to the place he grew up. Unsurprisingly, Dempsey has said he hopes to retire somewhere in Maine or the English countryside when he's ready to hang up his professional pursuits. School may not have been Patrick Dempsey's thing, but he certainly excelled in other areas. One skill that proved to have a huge impact on the rising star's future was juggling. In addition to placing second at the International Jugglers Association Championship, this unconventional talent also kickstarted his career. As he explained to Nobleman Magazine, I didn't know I wanted to be an actor. I fell into it completely by accident. Buckfield was like the hotbed for the new vaudevillian movement and they recruited me, and that's how I got the bug of performing. In addition to juggling, Dempsey also rode a unicycle, performed magic tricks, and even operated puppets as a member of a vaudevillian act. Soon after joining the circus, Dempsey dropped out and left for New York City. After seeing Dempsey perform in New York, actor and playwright Harvey Firestein invited him to audition for a play he was casting. Soon after landing a role in Firestein's Torch Song trilogy, Dempsey wound up on screen. His first screen credit was in the 1985 film, Heaven Help Us, and things spiraled upward from there. Big deal. Patrick Dempsey has always been a big sports fan, and from an early age, he had a passion for one New England staple in particular, skiing. Skiing was perhaps Dempsey's biggest childhood interest, and he had hopes of one day making the Olympics as part of the United States ski team. At 15, he won the Maine High School State Slalom Championship, and may have continued down that road had it not been for a spine compression sustained from a bad accident on Sugarloaf Mountain. Though he physically recovered from the injury, he told Men's Journal that his skiing was forever changed as a result. Dempsey still skis regularly, and in 2020, he even joined the U.S. Ski and Snowboard Foundation's Board of Trustees. His family has a home in Utah's Deer Valley, and they love to travel to places like Switzerland and Austria for their remarkable mountains. Even though skiing was supposed to be Dempsey's path to the Olympics, it was one of his other passions, cycling, that got him there. The actor was invited to be an honorary captain for the USA Olympic cycling team at the 2020 Olympics in Tokyo, Japan. Patrick Dempsey has utilized his love of cycling to do good in the world by way of his annual fundraiser, the Dempsey Challenge. The event includes both cycling and running, and since its inception in 2009, it has raised over $18 million. However, the fundraiser is just a part of Dempsey's larger commitment to cancer advocacy and care for those suffering from the disease. All proceeds go to the Dempsey Center, an organization Dempsey founded to help people diagnosed with cancer and their caregivers. The center is based near Dempsey's childhood home in Lewiston and was founded in honor of Dempsey's mother, Amanda. Amanda was first diagnosed with ovarian cancer in 1997, which prompted Dempsey to become a vocal advocate for cancer research. Sadly, she died from the disease in 2014. Dempsey utilized his rising celebrity to found the center in 2008, with the goal of providing personalized services for those in his local community to couple with their medical care. Among other things, the organization offers free access to wigs and support dogs, cancer education classes, counseling, fitness workshops, support groups, Reiki, massage, and acupuncture. In an interview with Monochrome Watches, Dempsey explained, We don't treat the disease, we treat the person. 
we spend a lot of money on research and development for drugs, and we need to continue to do that. But what we are really missing is the human side and caring side of cancer treatment, and that is what we provide. Center. There's so much work to be done, um, so much work has been done, and I just love the spirit. Before he earned the nickname McDreamy from his role on Grey's Anatomy, Patrick Dempsey was still widely renowned as a hunk. While he likely had no problem attracting ladies his own age, the young Dempsey actually wound up marrying a significantly older woman. The actor was only 18 when he met Rochelle Rocky Parker in 1984, when she played his aunt in the play Brighton Beach Memoirs. Parker was 44 and had three kids, including actor Corey Parker, with whom Dempsey has a close friendship. Dempsey was barely the legal drinking age when the pair married in 1987, which was young even for the time. Despite the age gap, Dempsey and Parker had a handful of happy years together before their 1991 split. Parker allegedly filed for divorce because Dempsey met someone else, and things got pretty nasty after that. In court papers, Parker alleged that Dempsey physically abused her, breaking her finger by slamming it in a car door during the making of Can't Buy Me Love. When these allegations became public following Dempsey's Grey's Anatomy success, Parker sang a different tune. She first told the National Enquirer the violence was a one-time thing, then released a statement days later confirming the allegations were false and that she only made them up due to some poor advice. Parker died of cancer in 2014. There are many perks to being the leading man on a fantastically popular network TV show, but the schedule is not one of them. It means being on the job most months of the year and working long days almost every day. While Grey's Anatomy had a fairly short first season, its successors often pumped out well above the standard 22 episodes per season. Dempsey starred on the show from 2005 to 2015, and the schedule eventually became too much for him to bear. He reflected to Fatherly, it's 10 months, 15 hours a day. You never know your schedule, so your kid asks you, what are you doing on Monday? And you go, I don't know, because I don't know my schedule. Doing that for 11 years is challenging. In addition to keeping him away from his loved ones, the rigorous timelines of filming also conflicted with his other passions, such as auto racing. He explained to British GQ, the showrunners were pissed because I was racing. With a show like that, you're at the mercy of what the show wants to do. I wanted to be more in control of things, and there's nothing like control behind the wheel. After leaving Grey's Anatomy, Dempsey resolved to only accept acting opportunities that could accommodate his other passions and family life. Grey's Anatomy has been known to have a lot of behind-the-scenes drama, and Dempsey has been the source of his fair share of it. He left the show amid reports of tension on set, and subsequent interviews with cast and crew have painted him as more than a bit difficult toward the end. Much of this drama has been chronicled in the 2021 book, How to Save a Life, the inside story of Grey's Anatomy, and Dempsey has been refreshingly honest about it since he left the cast. There was a lot written that you'd become a, a diva on set. Uh, right, I can understand why people would say that. What's more, it seems any bad blood between he and his co-stars was only temporary, as Dempsey ultimately returned to Grey's Anatomy for a guest arc. The behind-the-scenes drama is perhaps why Dempsey did not cry upon filming his final scene in 2015. In his exit interview with Entertainment Weekly, Dempsey said his last day was just like any other. He may not have felt emotional then, but the actor certainly got the feels when he returned in season 17 for four episodes, playing McDreamy in an ailing Meredith's dreams. Dempsey recalled to Variety, We all cried at the beginning, and we hugged each other. It was really for us to get the message out there to wear a mask, take care of yourself. Around the time that his divorce to Rocky Parker was finalized, Dempsey met his current wife, celebrity makeup artist Jillian Dempsey, when he was a client at her salon. The pair married in 1999, and they are still together today. However, that's not to say they did not face hurdles. In fact, Jillian even filed for divorce in 2015. The divorce never actually went through, but the couple remained separated until the following year. The Dempseys actively worked on their marriage during their time apart, and Patrick has credited the counseling they did with helping facilitate their reunion. He explained to Fatherly, Individual therapy and then I think couples therapy is important. Why not utilize those tools? Have someone give you some perspective. What I have learned is that I will hear things differently in a therapist's office just because we have a little bit of an emotional detachment. 
With their oldest child now an adult and their younger twins approaching college age, the couple will be empty nesters before long. Even so, they clearly know how to handle whatever issues change brings forth. Family is important for a lot of celebrities, but many have to choose between their art and being close to their loved ones when they make their passion a career. After leaving Grey's Anatomy, Dempsey began taking factors like a job's location, daily schedule, and the duration of the shoot into serious consideration before accepting any parts. Speaking with Oat Living in 2016, Dempsey explained that the length of an assignment in particular is very important to him now, and that he doesn't want to be away from his family for longer than a week at a time. By his own account, Dempsey is a hands-on dad who gets a kick out of the simple things, like coaching soccer and driving his kids to school. When his children were younger, he'd only take projects overseas if they aligned with his family members' schedules so that they could accompany him. For instance, the whole Dempsey clan set up shop in London when the actor was making Bridget Jones's baby, and they joined the Patriarch in Rome while he was filming the television series Devils. For Disenchanted, Dempsey not only took his family with him to Ireland, but European protocols during COVID-19 ensured that he worked a maximum of 10 hours a day. While that may sound like a lot to most viewers, that's a pretty light schedule by professional acting standards. True Patrick Dempsey fans know that he's a passionate car lover who has had an entire second career in racing. Unlike his nearly lifelong pursuit of acting, Dempsey's affiliation with racing cars was a passion that came about later in life. However, that doesn't mean he wasn't interested in the sport. Speaking with Jet Set Magazine, Dempsey recalled that he's been a lifelong fan of auto racing and that he and his father spent a lot of time watching it when he was growing up. Though he followed the sport, Dempsey only started to explore driving himself after his wife sent him to Skip Barber Racing School for a three-day course. According to Tempest Magazine, Dempsey was 38 when his wife signed him up for the course, and he credits those lessons as one of the primary experiences that kickstarted his path to becoming a semi-pro racer himself. He quickly made up for lost time, competing in the prestigious 24-hour Le Mans four times, where he took second place in 2015. Dempsey has also competed in plenty of other races, including the Rolex 24 at Daytona and the Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca, but stopped racing competitively after hitting the Le Mans podium. Discussing why he pulled back from the profession, he told Oat Living, I miss being competitive and I miss racing, but I really wanted to focus on developing the next step of my career. Even so, Dempsey has remained active in the racing world in other ways, most visibly as a team owner. He co-owns Dempsey Proton Racing and travels with the team, but he's no longer bound by the same time commitment as when he was racing himself. He told Porsche Sport he enjoys this new role, as it gives him the opportunity to support and advise drivers who are newer on the scene. Since Patrick Dempsey's racing team has a Porsche partnership, his relationship with the brand has been a long one. His work with Porsche designer eyewear is a natural extension of this pre-existing relationship with Porsche, a brand Dempsey told The Hollywood Reporter he has long admired. When you talk about the Porsche family, it's completely different because there's a sense of emotion there and openness. Porsche design began with watches in 1972, and it branched out to sunglasses in 1978. With such a recognizable face and head of hair and a very public connection to the car world, Dempsey was a natural choice for an ambassadorship. Dempsey started with Porsche Design Eyewear as an ambassador in 2021, and his product line Porsche Design Eyewear by Patrick Dempsey released in 2023. Dempsey was very involved in the design of the limited edition collection, which consists of two sunglasses and two prescription frames. Speaking about his experience on the campaign, Dempsey told People Magazine, it's exciting because you're learning something new. You're learning about a different craft, the technology and the history of Porsche, the design, their attitude and culture. Somewhere in between acting, racing, and running his nonprofit, Patrick Dempsey also had the time to found a production company. The company has a car-themed name, Shifting Gears Entertainment, and Dempsey has used it to focus largely on his vehicular interests. While the company has made a film, a miniseries, and a documentary unrelated to cars, most of the work they've produced has been related to racing. For example, Shifting Gears produced the Milo Ventimiglia film, The Art of Racing in the Rain, in 2019. And they also contributed to the production of Hurley, a film about racing legend Hurley Haywood's experiences as a closeted gay racer in the 1970s. One of Shifting Gear's other projects, Patrick Dempsey, Racing Le Mans, 
was a four-part docuseries that followed Dempsey over the course of 15 months as he prepared for and raced the 24 Hours of Le Mans in France. The actor has plenty of other racing stories he wants to develop for the screen as well. He told Tempest magazine, he'd like to do a project based upon Wolfgang von Trips, whose Ferrari accident killed him and 15 others at the 1961 Grand Prix in Monza, Italy. Certain celebrities have physical features so magnificent that they become an integral part of their brand and the cultural landscape at large. While this is slightly less common with male celebrities, it would be hard to disagree that Tom Cruise's middle tooth or Zachary Quinto's eyebrows weren't as iconic as Brooke Shields' eyebrows or Cindy Crawford's mole. In Patrick Dempsey's case, the actor's thick, wavy hair is what really set him apart from his peers. Some would argue that the look only got more refined when he started graying, with his salt and pepper strands becoming a physical trademark for the star. For a lot of people, it is hard to imagine Dempsey with different hair, but there's no need to envision it because Dempsey got rid of his luscious silver mane in 2022 when he bleached his hair blonde for his role in the film Ferrari. The whole process took six hours, and he told people he had to repeatedly text his wife for moral and technical support throughout the dye job. I was constantly texting my wife. It's like, is this the right direction we're going in? Because it's, it, was, it was yellow. The end result was polarizing, and Dempsey has been clear about knowing the importance of his natural color in his screen persona. He told Variety, it's fun to do something different. Unfortunately, or fortunately, I'm known for my hair. So this has really jacked up a lot of people. They don't know how to embrace it. Either they love it or they hate it. At one point in his life, when his career had slowed and he had not yet reached stardom through Grey's Anatomy, Patrick Dempsey made money by flipping homes in the Los Angeles area. According to an article in Men's Journal, the interior design and architecture enthusiast would work on five homes at a time and then resell them once they were fixed up. Even more impressively, he did much of the renovation work himself. He explained, I've always had an eye for good bones. I like the idea of being a caretaker for a while, then moving on. I believe in leaving a place better than you found it. Though he no longer flips homes, this mentality is very much alive in how Dempsey approaches his living spaces today. Dempsey currently has three homes, each in a very different part of the United States, and each decorated and designed to suit their location. His Malibu home is the family's main residence, and as of March 2023, is under renovation. The clan also has a place in Utah and another in Maine, the latter of which is older and more traditional and needed the most restoration of the trio. All three homes are quite different, for good reason. He told Architectural Digest he thinks mid-century modern suits the California house the best, while his main house is a, quote, stone home. For his Utah house, perhaps unsurprisingly, he opted for what he describes as a ski chalet design.